Hello my soccer universe! We have quite a few things to cover. We have cup rounds in Austria and Germany from the midweek and then a few interesting games that we saw there. Um, my full focus this weekend was not necessarily on these two leagues, although I saw more of the Austrian league than I usually do because there were other leagues that were more interesting. However, the way it's get I can schedule it, it's that this, these two leagues always finish Sunday evening. And it's very easy and I always said that uh, I'm gonna call uh, cover the Austrian league and if there's something interesting from German league I will in there. There was something interesting in the German league uh, for sure. Uh, the leaders Union Berlin lost and now it gets tight die and this all goes very much in favor of uh, Bayern Munich of course. The big winners in a way and one that is really starting to fly high, I think, is Frankfurt. And I said it last time, I think Frankfurt is a team that definitely could take a top four spot. Uh, they have the talent, they have the coaching, they just need to pull it together. Uh, in the cup round, we had also a few surprises, namely uh, Gladbach and Bremen going out. And for Bremen, I have the feeling that uh, these days is more or less... Uh, they are coming down. They had this bright start and now they are regressing a, a little bit more towards the uh, their potential. In Austria we had a really with a big uh, fight between Sturm and Salzburg which largely did not deliver another loss for Austria Vienna and then from my personal perspective last only a 2-2 draw which I said in a short video which was kind of a blah. And also the cup round. Yes one round further. Yes uh, it was not easy but it, it's all not convincing at the moment. However, the big shocker is there, the Sportclub, and I'm so happy about that actually ousted uh, Austria Vienna because it's really good to see such a traditional team being up there. And I really want to start in the cup round in Austria. You see the results. Uh, Rapid Vienna with now sporting director and coach in one person, Zoran Barisic, go to Tirol, who can keep the game really long even. And then uh, in the last 15 minutes, all for our fall for the part of the even Rapid goes to uh, Innsbruck to play against Wattens. Yeah, all makes sense. Um, they actually get a big win. Uh, then the other games uh, on Tuesday, all the favorites went through, but it was always a lot of work. Juan, for instance, had a 2-0 lead against the Rito in the second half, turns around a 3-2 win. Uh, Floresov against Lask, signed up for uh, Austrian um, Football Federation TV to watch that one. As much control as Lask had had, had had in first half, they only got one goal and then they concede an equalizer in the 40th. And that actually gave a lot of energy to Floresov. Who then in the second half, it was a really even game, went back and forth. A typical cup fight where the underdog uh, gave it their all. And there had to be a few saves by Lask, although they also had a few misses. And then when I really thought it was not happening any, uh, any, anymore, in the 89th, one second before the 90th, Goeginga uh, just gets his foot on a corner and it rolls into the net. And it's a 2-1 win for Lask. Uh, the biggest game, of course, was, was GRK against Sturm Graz, the Graz Derby, with a lot of ugly scenes uh, already leading up uh, to it, like a pig painted in red, hanging a uh, dead pig hanging over the um, uh, autobahn around Graz, uh, saying, yeah, uh, F you, Sturm forever, something like that. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, fans already walking uh, there to kind of proclaim. The derby, again, it was a, a derby and it was a fight where GRK definitely hung back, kept it tight and Sturm only found once the breakthrough. But that was actually a really well taken goal with Ljubic, a great pass to Ayeti, who then gets past the goalkeeper and puts it in, into the empty, empty net. And then uh, it was only one winner. But given that Sturm is a really, really good team at this moment, uh, they definitely second best in Austria. Uh, only a 1-0 in the derby is a little bit, um, you know, I don't want to say disappointing, but you would have expected more. Salzburg 6-1 at Miravaka and then the big shocker, Sportclub fully deserving to win 3-1 against Austria, uh, Vienna. When they took the lead in 22nd through Vujenovic, it was not undeserved. However, Fitz um, then converts a penalty. Uh, and then again, kind of tightish with Sportclub always having a chance there and they get in a go together through Rakovic 61st and 87th Belian makes it a 3-1 and Austria Vienna out of the cup 
which uh, kind of shows they, they have a very much an up and down season, a very difficult season for them. We also know already the draws, although we don't know where, uh, when exactly they will, will be played, but it will be around the 3rd of February, uh, which I think I have it wrong here, it should be Wednesday, but whatever. Um, the big one, Salzburg and Sturm Graz, <laughs> which we will talk about. Uh, that's the biggest one. Last Kevin Home game against Klagenfurt, uh, which I remember two seasons ago, was a hard, hard, hard fight, I think 5-3 after overtime. This will be the last game that Lask will be playing in Pushing, and then for the next week they move into the new arena. Uh, Wolfsburg against Rapid is also an interesting one. Then probably Robert Paul, the two weakest teams in the, are playing against the Davis Sport Club, having a home game against Reed. And probably they would like the chances of advancing, although Reed probably will get this done. Moving over to uh, the past weekend, Tirol 5-1 over Hartberg. Hartberg now in real trouble. Rapid Vienna also in trouble. And whenever they play at home, they seemingly cannot get it going. Markus Pink scoring in the sixth minute already or, 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 or the win. And Klagenfurt probably could have gotten even more there. I already said that the big match uh, between Salzburg and Sturm didn't really deliver. It was a rather intense, tight game with not many big scoring chances. The biggest one is when a uh, shot from Sturm uh, got past the goal and hit and just before the line grabbed it. Uh, but I honestly think there was not much. Uh, of course, there was also there had to be a red card in there. This uh, got to Pavlovich of Salzburg for a second yellow with diving. But you know, um, I think everyone expected a little bit more. But you know, with Champions League looming and Europa League looming, maybe uh, it's not quite there. But overall, so far, Sturm Graz have won the head-to-head -head against Salzburg because they won the first game at home. Lustena and Ried, nil-nil, doesn't get them anywhere, but a huge win for Altach in Wolfsburg. Um, even missing a penalty just before the half where they would have made it 3-2, they made it in the second half, 3-2. Last against Austria, I th Austria, Vienna, Austria. <laughs> uh, Honestly, first half, a game to forget, maybe slight advantages last, but not really much. Uh, second half, a few chain changes were made and Lusk uh, took control of the game. Uh, penalty was then given. I think it was a correct call. austrian fans don't uh, think so. Uh, Jules pulls that, that away and then on, on Osli Liu, which needs to make it 2-0. Uh, Lusk having more control, but then almost out of nowhere, Polster gets the equalizer with the first real shot on goal for us, 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 us a uh, few changes made, Lask still having a bit more control over the game, even creating more chances, uh, but then with the second shot on goal, uh, again, Fitz uh, assisting from a free kick, and Martins gets in a header with Renna, where he wins it, and it's 2-1 Austrian, a very weird header to be honest, and I, I was actually a little bit, I cannot be again such a loss, However, they come back and Horvath yanks it in in the 80, 87 and I really thought they might actually find a winner as well because they were the better team. Alas, it was not to be. So uh, if the top three teams all draw, there's not much change up top. It's just that Klagenfurt gets a little bit closer again and Tirol now moving ahead, having a big move. Rapid Vienna not looking good, but they have a game ahead in, again against Hartberg, who also, after they won in Linz, they really have been losing all the games and, they, and this makes this uh, loss hurt even more, I gotta say. Especially if you look at the final uh, expected regular season standings. The two Viennese clubs just how barely hung, hang, hang, hang on. Tirol might sneak into the top six again. Uh, we gotta see, uh, it has been so far that it was r rare. It's only last season since we have this new format that both Vienna teams made it into the championship playoffs. So uh, watch that space. It is really, really tight. Klagenfurt establishing itself at least as the fourth power in Austria for at the moment, which is... a Given their small budget and, and so on, yes, beautiful stadium, uh, it's rather remarkable. On, on, on the bottom, that win gave Altach a huge boost. As I said, Lustner, similar to what I will say about Bremen, they had a good start, but coming a little bit back down. But Hartberg is the team that seems at the moment worrying. Again, now just get maybe enough points because it the points will be slashed in half and then might be a completely different story. And if you look here at the lower... Uh, Expected, there's only five points between those six teams. On top, it's a little bit more uh, expanded. 
Uh, in the midweek, we have a makeup game, Rapid against Hardback. Traditionally, this is a game that Hardback also, also wins, and given that Rapid do have some trouble, and this was the game that was postponed because Rapid had to play against Vaduz, uh, which they then en ended up losing a ridiculous call. And then on the weekend, we have, um, I think, not really nominally big games in there, although Klang for Tirol is uh, one of the outside things. We have top against bottom, Salzburg against Hartberg. Lask play at home against Wolfsburg, which is a tricky game because they rarely win at home, but they always win in Wolfsburg big. And Sturm against Rizzo, you know, there's nothing really. I, I also want to see what Alta, who had beaten Austrivena uh, in the first fixture, what they could do. Over in Germany, German Cup, here's just a selection of results. Leipzig, it, it, this was the marquee fixture. Le Le Leipzig has Hamburg, and there was also some ugly scenes because in the previous game that Leipzig had, uh, which was should have been played close to Hamburg, uh, Ham Hamburg fans poisoned basically the pitch, then they had to play in Leipzig with all the proceeds going to the team that they played against. It was a really, really uh, uh, ugly thing. So 4-0 um, seemed to be, <laughs> they were up for that game. Let, let's put it that Yusuf Paulsen scoring to Simakan and Heinrichs getting another one. Uh, the big shocker was, of course, Darmstadt losing to Borussia Mönchengladbach, who have been actually decent this season. Um, going down twice through Tietz and Seidel Nets only after the half, uh, pulling one uh, back. Uh, Hoffenheim, Schalke 5-1, which meant that the coach then was finally sacked. Uh, Freiburg also struggling against St. St. Pauli, who had a 1-0 lead deep into stoppage time and Ginter gets the equalizer. And then in overtime, uh, Gregoric scores the win in the 119th minute. So they just escaped um, the penalty shootout. Uh, Dortmund 2-0 at Hannover was not that hard. Uh, Paderborn had a 2-0 lead at the half against Bremen, but Bremen actually probably should, should have won it. There was a, a contentious goal disallowed. Uh, Bitten could advise equalize, and then it goes to penalties, and the last penalty uh, is not converted, and that's why Paderborn move on. Bayern wearing the new Olympiastadion jerseys. Um, and I thought, yeah, they will wear, whereas it makes total sense that they wear this in the cup, and that's probably where we will see them. Again, down in the ninth minute through Peters, now where Chupo Motin gets an equalizer, and then a the second half, it was all Bayern. Um, Upamecano on goal makes it 2 3 at one point, but it's overall uh, easy 5 to win. Stuttgart, big 6 0 over Bielefeld after the 4 1 over Bochum. You really thought that Stuttgart gets something going, and Union also over Heidenheim at home. But alas, it was not to be with Stuttgart because, um, as we'll see a little bit later, they then got a beating themselves. However, the next cup round, uh, a few interesting ones. I mean, Mainz against Bayern, I think it's the one that sticks out, as well as El Plastico between Leipzig and Hoffenheim. Uh, Frankfurt, Darmstadt, I think those two are relatively close together. We also have Baden-Württemberg, we between Sandhausen and Freiburg. You see the crests are relatively sim similar. They are also from the same region. So there are a few derbies uh, thrown up there and we have one duel between Bundesliga teams Nürnberg and Düsseldorf and Bochum and Dortmund is also also dark because they're all in the Ruhr region. Uh, nominally probably the best one is Union against Wolfsburg but you know uh, let's see. Mainz against Bayern probably, probably, probably is a little bit better. And speaking of Mainz they started the round really big 5-0 over Köln. Hurts a little bit. You know I like Köln. Um, the craziest game was Augsburg against Leipzig because Augsburg had a 3-0 lead, 1-0 at the half through Berisha penalty, Demirovic and Vargas in the 64th had the game basically sewn up. However, then Iago is sent off for two yellow cards, very, very, very close succession to each other. And especially the second one was just stupid to push uh, the player away. You will get a second yellow card for that, unfortunately. And then almost... Quickly there, thereafter, uh, Andre Silva pulls one back. However, it really looked like that Augsburg is going to hang on through 3-1, this, uh, um, despite being a man down. However, then a Nkunku free kick, brilliantly outside of the wall. And yeah, goalie probably could have looked better, but it's not. Uh, it's the uh, reserve goalkeeper. So that's fine. It's 3-2, but you still got to hang on to that. No. Just a minute later, it's 3-3, and at that point, I think everyone in Augsburg thought they might lose against Leipzig. Um, Leverkusen fight back to get the 2-2 against Wolfsburg. Um, lots of work for Schabelon, so they are Dortmund rolling over Stuttgart. 
Uh, and again, it must be a weird week for, Stutt for Stuttgart because it's really coming down and uh, Dort Dortmund Dev definitely um, made hot by the loss to uh, Union Berlin last, last weekend. Uh, it was the Bellingham uh, Reina show and Musa Mukoko in there as well. When they are going well, it all looks well. However, it doesn't always. I mean, Stuttgart is proper for a team that is rather nice to play against for them. Bayern 2-0 over Hoffenheim, Chupomotinga, Musiala, already have. It was clear. Uh, and then also Frankfurt, a pretty big win. I mean, they had a 3 0 at halftime. Lindström, um, um, Lindström uh, a, a Bimbe, and, Lind and again Lind Lindström scoring. Uh, and only Thuram laid on can pull one back. Ah, uh, Gladbach. You know, Frankfurt and Gladbach are two teams that I think could challenge for Europe or will challenge for European spots, but uh, they can either be very brilliant or uh, implode. And I don't know, we, uh, one of those two teams, I think, will get it to uh, get up. The shock of the round is, of course, Bochum uh, losing, uh, winning 2-1 against uh, Union Berlin. 2-0 lead in the 71st, uh, Hoffmann and Holtmann scoring. Then Pantovic misses a penalty, but he gets in the stop, so which time the pullback goal. And Hertha get a rare win. I mean, Hertha are really hard to beat. But now they get a win again, 2-1 against Schalke. Schalke also being rather down and out uh, in a way. So Union still top. However, Bayern, it's now... It feels like it's now going Bayern's way very, very much. Uh, Frankfurt, Dortmund, Mainz all moving up. Frankfurt now in a Champions League spot together with Frey. Freiburg, the question is, will they hold it? Because I think Dortmund definitely will go in there. And let's see, Union uh, Frankfurt will see in the expected standings in just a little bit. But first, on the bottom, Stuttgart, Bochum, Schalke. Those two, those three seem to be the teams that are really fighting against re re relegation. Although Wolfsburg uh, also doesn't look good. I think Leverkusen eventually will find their way out, although uh, they are not performing all that well. If we look at the expected standings, you see that Leverkusen... It's probably will finish mid-table, similar to what uh, Gladbach did last season, I think. Uh, up top, it's all Bayern. Dortmund, Leipzig still not too far, far away. They could get a third uh, spot and then Union, Frankfurt, Freiburg. Uh, Gladbach probably will also go in because we have to have, have, have to see how the cup uh, will go. But I think that one of those uh, top teams here will win that one. Um, Give you the next two rounds. We have a preview of the cup game between Bay uh, Bayern and Mainz. However, a uh, reverse fixture. Uh, Leipzig, Leverkusen uh, sounds good, but I think it's Frankfurt against Dortmund. That is the real uh, test. That is the outstanding fixture there. Union Berlin against Gladbach is a sleeper match for sure as well. And then uh, in the week after... If I look at it, there's nothing really, but uh, Bremen and Schalschalk is also two promoted teams, but it seems that Schalke is in real, real trouble. So it's the Europa League duel between Freiburg and Köln that I'm looking here, there. Hertha against Bayern, maybe. We also have a preview to another cup game between Dortmund and uh, Bochum. So yeah, that's it from me from uh, Austria and Germany. Please let me know if you want to add anything to what I've covered in this video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I'm going to talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.